Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast, a 30-minute mini version of the In Wheel Time car show that airs live every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central. Anywhere. Streamed and downloaded to your bedroom, bathroom, and automobile around the globe. <laughs> it's the In Wheel Time car talk show. Just ahead, we talked to Divya Sangam from Lending Tree about projected increases in your car insurance. It's coming if you haven't had it already. <laughs> Plus, uh, we'll get you caught up on the stories making automotive news headlines this week. How do you along with Mike out of this world, Mars? King Conrad DeLong. We always need more Jeff Zekin. <laughs> I'm Don Armstrong. Thanks so much for joining us on this Saturday. And joining us now, I don't know where she is. Where are you located physically in the in the country, Divya? Uh, I'm in New Jersey. New Jersey. All right. Well, you, yes. you, you've been experiencing some weather issues up there, and I think you got more coming, don't you? Yeah, um, it's been back-to-back storms. Yep. Um, we haven't seen any snow yet, but it's definitely been a lot of rain and sleet, and it's just a mess. Yeah, well, we're, we're, we're about to get <laughs> Welcome into... to New Jersey. That's it. We're, <laughs> we're about to uh, uh, experience some cold weather here, so I'm wearing my, my plaided, what do you call this Lumberjack. Thing? Lumberjack, yeah. yeah. That's it. Uh, what, what is it? A flannel shirt? It is a flannel, <laughs> just to just to get my body ready. Okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> you don't want to hear about all that, and we want to talk to you about auto insurance increases for twenty uh, twenty four. Um, yes. Uh, apparently, uh, it's a thing that actually began last year, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And um, and what are, what are what are increases? looking like across the board pretty much so um our study basically looks at how much insurance companies are going to raise rates because hey we all know the rate hikes are coming and for a lot of us we may not have done anything differently from 2023 to 2024 but our rates are going to go up and the reason why is that your insurance company is raising rates across the board for every driver and i'm talking all 50 states are seeing rate hikes And the average rate hike that insurance companies are uh, going to get this year is about 12.6%. Yikes. Boy, that's that's pretty heavy duty. Yeah. To put it in perspective, you know, this puts 2024's auto insurance rates way above what it was before the pandemic. I'm talking a 29% increase from 2018. Holy Toledo. Hmm. Is it and, that, and is is it is it just because of the cost of everything going up, or is it repairs? Are people getting in more wrecks, uh, costing more to actually uh, fix the cars? What is the real reason behind it? I mean, you've captured most of it, right? The math behind auto insurance is pretty. Um, it's pretty simple, you know. If the number and the volume of claims go up, and the cost of those claims go up. It's going to cost the auto insurance company more money, and you know they're going to pass on that cost to consumers. But there's also the other part of it, and that's risk. So every insurance company has to take out insurance for themselves in case of any catastrophe that leads to huge um, claims and other disasters. But as we know, in the past five to ten years, what we would consider catastrophes are becoming pretty common. You know, climate change means that. Once in a hundred year flood events are happening pretty much every two years. Um, And then the other part of this is, you know, risk. There has been an increase in car thefts. I mean, we did the, we looked at the numbers and we're talking a 700% increase in catalytic converter thefts. Oh yeah. Um, You know, the guy who, uh, who we go to for our auto repairs, he was warning us about, uh, thieves stealing sensors from the front of your car you know the sensors that help with driver assist Mm -hmm. and um you know your uh all of the other technologies that your car has that's meant to make your drive safer well those sensors are located at the front of your car and they're pretty easy to steal and so that's the new trend of things getting stolen and that's not a quick fix that's an expensive piece of equipment that's going to cost you and ultimately the insurer money so all of this is adding up, and it's driving up the cost of insurance for every single American. And yeah, it's kind of unfair because it is 
a difficult year. It's been a difficult few years. Inflation has been doing a number on us, and it seems like car insurance inflation is here to stay. Well, well last I, year, I, I will, my insurance went up considerably, and I called them about it. And they said the state of Texas insurance board had approved a rate increase across the board due to inflation. Yeah. So, so mine went up like 45% just because what? the rates went up because of inflation. Well, inflation didn't go up 45%. Well, but the insurance board let it go up that far. And, of course, every insurance company it's took going up to take everything. every bit they can. That's the way it affected my numbers so the, the, my cars. You know, you, you say that the reason rates are going up because their costs are going up. But why did we not get any rate flattening or decrease when their costs went down during the pandemic? Because nobody was driving. Accident rates were way lower. Um, the miles driven were, you know, one tenth of what they were, but, you know, never saw the benefit back to the consumer of them making a higher net profit during that time period. I would like to correct you there because there was a rate decrease during the pandemic. It wasn't a lot. It was like 12 percent, but it was two two percent. So you know, they did decrease rates. And, um, you know, when we were all stuck at home during lockdowns, insurance companies were giving out rebates and refunds um, prompted by various state governments, but also, um, you know, because they felt like they wanted to pay it back or pay it forward. And so we did experience some pandemic era discounts. You know, in fact, auto insurance rates have been fairly flat uh, since 2019. They dipped in 2020. Um, and the increases were just like 1%, half a percent until we hit 2023, when the rate increase went up to 11.3 percent, and then 2024, the anticipated 12.6 percent. Now, mind you, this is just how much insurance companies are raising rates. Real rate hikes will be a lot higher because every single driver is different, right? And I think the Census Bureau just uh, published some data which said that rates have gone up 19 percent. So um, it is a very frustrating situation all around. <laughs> So, Divya, let me ask you a question about the the parts, uh, theft of parts, catalytic converters. Yeah. Now you're talking about the sensors on the front. In my mind, isn't it true that the, since the insurance companies have started trying to get and use used parts on for repairs to kind of cut down on cost, aren't they kind of driving that? I mean, if they well, didn't allow places to buy them and use them then there wouldn't be necessarily such a big market, in my mind. Well, that's a really interesting uh, question. And honestly, I wouldn't know because, you know, this was just an anecdote that was shared with me by uh, my auto mechanic, who's a really nice guy. We talk a lot about insurance and, you know, car repairs and what's going on in his world. But there is no hard data on the theft of these sensors but there is data on the catalytic converter theft. And you're right. There was a market for selling these uh, parts of cars that you would normally not think would get stolen. Um, I don't know if it's driven by the insurance companies, but there was definitely a market because, you know, the height of the pandemic, there was a huge shortage of these parts. And so there was just a lot of demand for it. Well, I can only imagine it would. I would assume that it would be cheaper to go to uh, a wrecking yard, uh, uh, buy a used catalytic converter. Mm -hmm. Of course, you're rolling the dice. You really don't How know. How good is it? Yeah. Yeah. How many miles has it really got on it? Has it been underwater? Has it been damaged some way? So you pay a catalytic converter, what, $2,000 new out of the box and above. So you go to the junkyard, as I, I, I like to call it, and you buy a used one of a car that is exactly like yours. You cut it off of there and you take it home and you take it to your muffler guy and have him weld it in. It's a roll of the dice whether or not the thing is any good. Right. But, but then you take over like where I live. We don't have the smog inspections like you have here in Houston. So how would you ever know if it didn't work unless it was really causing a problem mechanically? Well, I just got to say the, indicators, the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the light comes It'll on. It'll turn on a check right. engine light. But, you know, what happens over here also affects you even no, I, though you don't have the law over there. Right. No, I, I agree. I agree. And, and the catalytic converters is kind of what I was talking about because I've read about these repair shops that are now being authorized to use 
used, used parts. parts. Oh, yeah. Well, and and there's there's industries built around used parts. You know, think about the company here in Houston called LKQ, yes. like kind and quality. And ultimately, what they're doing is they're going out and they're buying auction salvage cars and stripping out the parts they can and selling those component parts out of the salvage and that's cars. That's just only one aspect of their business though. They do they do body panels and right, things right, of that right. nature. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they do the whole car. And but you know, again, it's, it's interesting uh, that you bring that up because there was a time, this is a couple of years ago, that I was looking for a used part. And there is a network, a nationwide network mm-hmm. of used parts. And you <laughs> go chop shop. <laughs> you go online and you look look online, and you know that part may be that you're looking for at a salvage yard in Wisconsin, and they'll mail it to you. Yep. Uh, and so it's not just the local junkyard. I used to go to H.B. Bailey's junkyard uh, down there off a of telephone road back decades and decades ago to buy uh, used parts for that old truck that I had. And they had several of those trucks. And so I just stripped them off whatever I needed and, and you know, paid him uh, pennies on the dollar for the stuff. So and- what, what Divi was talking about, about these uh, ADAS, the automatic driver assist system, components that are really just mounted below the front bumper, behind the front fascia. I mean, all somebody has to do is duck down underneath, and some of those components are snapped in. Yeah, you know, you Almost just, like taking a light bulb. Yeah, and there's a connector right there as well, so you can disconnect that and take it, and that component used would probably sell for four or $500. New would be well over $1,000. What I don't understand is with a car that has a computer in it, and you turn the car on, and it knows all of those sensors that are around mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. to be able... Why don't they have that connected to some sort of anti-theft device? At least blow the horn when somebody disconnects it. It probably wouldn't be difficult to do. You know, they could hook it up to OnStar as well. And yeah. OnStar well, can see. I mean, this is the first I've heard of this being an issue, you know, even though she, I mean, there's no hard data she's talking about, but it's not like the catalytic converters that they've been doing it for a while. So somebody may come up and do something like that once they realize Preventative, yeah. there's a problem. Yeah. yeah. Or we just inform the public how to steal. Well, <laughs> there's that. Um, well, let me put it this way. I think, you know, you guys and, you know, your audience are very informed about cars. You know how to go and shop around for parts. You probably know who to take it to to fix it or you can fix it yourself. But I speak for the part of the country that is very car illiterate. And I would consider myself more on the side of car illiterate than, you know, very car wear. And if something like that happens to me, I wouldn't know that I can go shop around for a secondhand catalytic converter. I wouldn't know that I could, there is an aftermarket for, you know, secondhand car parts. So I would just take it to my repair guy and go file my a police report, go to the insurance company, and they will take care of it because all I'm paying out of my pocket is the deductible, right? So the insurance company is the one that's going to bear the rest of the cost and, as a consumer, I'm not thinking about how that's going to affect my rates in the future, but it is all adding up and it is affecting our rates. Yeah. Yes. Well, and I think in your insurance policy, most of them now have listed that the insurance carrier can use LKQ parts. Right. And they actually yeah. use that phraseology right. as LKQ, um, allowing them to use the used parts uh, system to repair your vehicle. Most of the time, I think I'd rather have a nice straight body panel of, that was originally manufactured for the car assembler right. than go and have a Chinese knockoff because it fits right. where yeah. the Chinese knockoff doesn't usually fit. No. Yeah. No. There's so I would rather have adjustments. Have, yeah, exactly. And I just wanted to bring up another point because you were talking about, you know, how there's an aftermarket for used car parts, but that tends to be more more common with internal combustion engine cars, not so much with electric cars. Electric cars are still fairly new, so it's really hard for you to find used parts. And electric cars are just a lot more expensive to insure. You know, there's they're 23% more expensive to insure in 2024. And it's a, it's a controversial topic, but all three Tesla models that are currently popular in the market are the three most expensive EVs to insure. Oh, wow. I didn't realize yeah. that. That's good information. I did know. not know that. Where do we talk to Buzz next time? Yeah. <laughs> Are we even talking to because, Buzz anymore? I don't know. I don't know either. Yeah, we're 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 working on that. Uh, uh, no. So so the the <laughs> additional expense for the Teslas 
is that because of all the technology and what it costs to fix the computer screens and everything? A hundred percent. It's it's because of the technology and, you know, they run on batteries. And I've been reading a lot of stories and hearing anecdotes about how when a car gets into a crash, an EV, and the battery cover gets scratched or the battery gets slightly dinged, Has to be um, replaced. it's too expensive to repair that yeah. insurance companies are just totaling these vehicles because they don't see there's any value in repairing or uh, replacing a battery that might set them back 10, 15 grand. No, at least 10 or 15 grand. You know, some of these yeah. battery packs are well north of $20,000. But I also exactly. think there's a, a liability concern someplace down the road. If, if something happens uh, and, and somebody finds out, well, you left a battery in there that's cracked, a housing's cracked or something like that. Then uh, there's there's the liability, the liability issue. issue, and then when the manufacturer says in their documentation that any damage to the battery requires replacement, which Tesla does, yeah. that now that forces the insurance carrier to replace that battery as well at whatever their pro- cost is the to going replace rate. the battery. Yikes! And you, yeah. and you cannot take your Tesla to your guy down the road. It, they they need to be fixed by authorized. Tesla approved repair shops. So that, you know, increases the costs. Mm-hmm. But then there's also the other aspect, right? A lot of insurers are seeing uh, Tesla drivers as slightly more risky. Um, they, we, we did another report, and I can send this to you. Um, it's a fun one, uh, which looks at the car makes, uh, car brands whose drivers get into the most accidents and no surprises, Tesla was number one. <laughs> oh, my God. You think some of that's driven by their automated driving systems or just? Personally, I think it is because I've driven in a friend's, I was a passenger in a friend's Tesla. And I got this feeling that she was so trusting of the self-driving and the technology built into the car that she wasn't really checking her blind spots and turning um, that was the last time I got into that. <laughs> I said I would rather walk. Are you still <laughs> yes. speaking to her? Do you want to name I names? Still, I still talk to her. She's a lovely lady, but I said I'm not getting in the car with you. I would rather walk. And if it's 15 and miles, there's a I would point to that. Walk. I've seen them on the road. That I think it's because there's no noise and you've got all that torque. You just fly. Uh, my boss, uh, the owner of the company, has one. And I've ridden with him, and like you, it's a little scary. He doesn't use the automated functions. He's just got a lead foot. And that's yeah. all it is. Yeah. Yeehaw. Yeah. 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 And he just um, zing. And I I don't know what you've heard, but New Jersey drivers can be a little crazy. So you really want to have all of your senses on the road and not trust your car to um, avoid other crazy drivers. Yes. So, Divya, what is, the, what is the bottom line on this insurance rate stuff? I mean, is there a place that we can go that – basically compares uh, the top tier insurance companies with each other. Uh, do we buy some cheap insurance and then find out after we get into a bad wreck that they're not going to cover it? Uh, h- how do we go about that? So here's the thing, right? Um, of course, you can go read our report. Just go on Google and search for state of auto insurance 2024 value penguin and ours will be the first result. Um, but the second thing you should, and I recommend everyone do this, is Call up your agent or your insurance company and ask them, number one, what your policy covers, what its limits are. Because I understand, look, you know, people like us, we're familiar with the documentation. We know what the language is, but that isn't the case for a lot of people. So if you're reading your insurance policy and something isn't clear to you, you don't know what that means, call your insurance company and ask them what it means, number one. Number two, shop around. You know, we did a survey at the end of uh, 2023. And, you know, we ask people, are you shopping around? Because it seems very critical this year and last year to shop around, given all the rate hikes. And like 69% of Americans shop around. So there's still a section of people who aren't shopping around for rates. And what we found is if you shop around, you're going to save. The average saving was actually slightly higher than the rate hikes for many people. Oh, wow. That might not be the case for everyone, um, especially if you're on top of your insurance and you're checking it and you're, you know, shopping around. Um, all the time. You may not get as big of a saving, but for a lot of people who have stayed with their insurance company for years and then they're seeing their rates go up 45, 50%, like, you know, what you brought up, um, it definitely makes sense to shop around. Don't accept it as, you know, this is a bad year. I have to pay more out of pocket. There's definitely offers. So what you're saying is spend about five minutes with your insurance agent and say, hey, what's up? Yeah. 
what's up? Ask them what's going on. Ask them, hey, you've raised my rate so much. Is there a discount I can get? You know, can I put a telematics device in my car? Uh, I know I'm a safe driver. I think I can qualify for that discount. You know, can I get a bundling discount? Hey, my teenager got good grades. Can you give us a good grades discount on the back of that? Like there's so many discounts out there that aren't very readily known. So call them up and ask about discounts and just keep pushing. Not only that, but age. Seniors get a different yeah. rate. Yeah, yeah. Mike. it goes up yeah. even higher. Yeah, at go, some Mike. point yeah. it starts going up. Divya, it's down. always great to talk to you. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you. And it's great to see you again. And best of luck to you in 2024. And hopefully we'll talk to you again later this year. I look forward to it. And Happy New Year, you guys. And uh, Happy New Year to all of your listeners. Same to you. Thanks, Thank I'll talk to you Thank soon. You, everyone. Okay. Divya Sangam with Lending Tree. Very, and very what, good the penguin, the, it's the Value Penguin. Value Penguin. That's two interviews we've had with people who make me feel smarter. Yeah, well. <laughs> that, that made me smarter, excuse me. I was going to say, wake up. Right. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not. We've got an interview coming up uh, in the next uh, segment of our show uh, with Dewhawk Racing. Ah. Oh. Uh-huh. That you, I think that you're going to really enjoy. They look like a fun bunch. Loris College Racing Club, sponsored by RFA Engineering, Dewhawk Racing. We're going to talk to JJ, Cam, Jacob, and Jake, if they can get there in their snowmobile. Is that like Larry, Daryl, and Daryl? Uh-huh. Uh, Daryl, my Do we cheat Darryl? him Do we? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. Some of the stories making uh, headlines this week. First of all, let's do some recall, shall we? Okay. Driver's seat airbag improperly mounted hmm. on the Audi... Q7, Q8, RSQ8, SQ7, and SQ8, 23 and 24 model years. Mm-mm-mm. Insufficient illumination from low beams on the BMW R18B, R18, and R18 Transcontinental. R18. I don't know what that is, but whatever it is. Oh, it's it a BMW. Is. It means people don't ever use their blinkers. Is that what it means? <laughs> That's probably I'm right. I'm trying to put in a, a picture of the R18. There's a pedestrian warning sound malfunction on the BMW. Get out of, uh, get out I, of the I, way. I, 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 guess, I guess it's an i5 or an i5 M60 for 2024. Yeah. Me, me. Thud. Uh, ax, thud. <laughs> Axle spindles may fracture Ooh. in the Volvo VNL. That's a truck. Ah. I just saw that. Volvo Trucks North America. So forget that one. I just, I, <laughs> unless I just you don't have it fixed. I was gonna say, unless it's driving next to you or behind you. Yeah. Ford F-150. We've mentioned this before. Mention it again because now it's on the national recall list. Uh, Ford F-150 for 21 to 23 model years. Rear axle hub bolt may break. Mm-hmm. Wow. Oops. Only once. <laughs> That's it. As you go spinning off off the highway and Zing. into the ditch. Tesla has lowered driving range estimates across its lineup of electric vehicles as a new U.S. government vehicle testing regulation takes effect with the goal of ensuring that automakers accurately reflect real-world performance. This from Automotive News. Tesla has historically issued range estimates that overstate what its cars can deliver, Mm. prompting widespread complaints from customers, according to some automotive testing experts and a Reuters investigation last year. Reuters reported in July that the automaker about a decade ago rigged the algorithm that controls in-dash range estimates in Tesla vehicles to give rosy projections of how far owners can drive before needing to recharge. Sounds like a scandal. The story also found the automaker created a secret team in 2022 to suppress thousands of driving range complaints and cancel owners' range-related service appointments. Tesla's website now estimates the range of a Model Y long range, for instance, at 310 miles, while the government's fuel economy site maintained by the Environmental Protection Agency still lists the same vehicle's range at 330 miles. For the performance variant of the Model Y, a small crossover from 303 miles to 285 miles, the Reuters review showed. And then Elon buys Twitter and suppresses the news even further. Well, I hadn't no, thought I about think, that. Yeah. yeah. No? I don't think he would. No. He, d- he doesn't care yeah. about the, yeah. that sort of he stuff. He wants to get minor. Yeah. He wants to go to the sun. Mm-hmm. Well, um, go at night. You got to go at night. You got to go at night. That's right. 
Fisker. Thank you, AOC. You know, Fisker, <laughs> Fisker is uh, or is trying to be a high end automobile manufacturer. Well, they are with the price. Fisker is abandoning its plan to deliver vehicles directly to its customers and will transition to franchise dealerships starting this year. The company already announced its intention to sign 50 dealers by mid year. But that's just the start of the move that will take the electric vehicle startup out of the vehicle distribution and service business, like Tesla. Tesla. Fisker said he will attend the National Automobile Dealers Association convention next month and personally make the pitch to dealers to sell Ocean, the Ocean crossover. He said that franchise dealers will also uh, get future products currently under development, including a small $30,000 EV called The Pair and the Alaska an electric mid-sized pickup truck. So is it Bonnie? His Bonnie lies over the ocean? His Bonnie <laughs> lies over the ocean. Well, I think it was that, one of the first uh, solar vehicles back in the day when they had the, all the, the panels on the roof. Panels yeah. on the roof, yeah. And, and went out of business. Mm-hmm. And finally, new vehicle inventory in the U.S. rose by more than 200,000 uh, 200, in December That's and started January half again as large as it was a year earlier, the highest in three years, according to Cox Automotive. Cox said vehicle inventory stood at 2.7 million in its latest estimate, representing a 71 day supply, which is a lot, yeah. and up from its estimated 2.5 million a month earlier. Cox said new vehicle inventories had recovered a year earlier in about. 1.8 million as the industry slowly regained production from 2021's component shortages. And uh, part of the reason I read after that story was published by Automotive News that the problem now is coming up where people aren't buying new cars because they can't afford them because, them because they have raised the prices of these new cars tremendously. And that's why I was talking to Mars there a minute ago about the price of that vehicle that he was re- reviewing. And it starts at 29 Go try to find one that's yeah. actually at 29 well, the I entry would, level. You're not. Well, it's it's the cost of the car, the price of the car, the cost of insurance that we just learned from Divya, as well as the cost of financing. Because you're looking at a lot of car financing now is pushing 10%. Uh, six and a half to, to nine right now. I was at a meeting that we was held at... Uh, uh, the Ford dealership down there in 59 and talking to the dealer principal, Patrick Saxton, he said that prices, monthly payments are in the $1,500 range on an F-150. Wow. What are you talking about? And that's seventy to $90,000 truck. $100,000 truck, yeah. So. Yeah. And, and, and then plus insurance. You got insurance. Insurance. Yeah. Fuel, mm-hmm. or they uh, plug it into the wall, or you go to the gas station look, and fill it up. You're looking at seven, well, eight years financing. But, but the high Inventory level, 71 days, is going to push manufacturers to more incentives. Yes, it that, will. That, but That always it, happens, that balance of inventory mm-hmm. levels and incentives. As the inventory levels get higher, the incentives do as well. Hey, it's time to take a break here on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. We've got more coming up. Stay with us. Rev your engines and set sail for the ultimate surf and turf. The Houston Automotive Show, January 24th through the 28th at NRG Center. One ticket gets you into both the auto show and the boat show. See your favorite car and boat brands under one roof. Learn about the latest electric vehicles and test drive one with Evolve Houston. Board your dream boat and check out the bass fishing demos. It's the Houston Automotive Show, January 24th through the 28th. Buy early and save at autoboativeshow.com. You own a car you love. Well, why not let Gulf Coast Auto Shield protect it? Houstonian John Gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts. We promise you'll be impressed. Whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like-new appearance, apply a ceramic coating, install a paint protection film, nano-ceramic window tint, or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to gcautoshield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or gcautoshield.com. 
The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 of the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katie. Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortilla in College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana? Stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InWheelTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeart Podcast, Podcast Addict, TuneIn, Pandora, and Amazon Music. Keep listening, and we'll see you soon.